Come on, come on, here we go, here we go, come on, come on, here we go, here we go, come on, come on, here we go, here we go, come on, yeah. I'm trying to bring you out the way that you feel. I was a lifeguard at uh off of Bankhead Highway. And uh it was at this place called Gun Club. And it's between two projects, Perry Homes, which I don't think is there anymore, and another one I can't remember, but they used to rip down the uh, barbed wire fence every day, every night when we left, and go swimming all night. And then we'd come to work, and the barbed wire fence would rip down, so we had to wait. This old dude would come and put the fence back up, and then we would open the pool. And uh, my first day at that pool, let's see, I'm sitting in the lifeguard chair, and this crackhead woman kind of comes up to the, uh, the fence. She like, like God, like God, that's my daughter out though. And I say, oh, that's your daughter. And I was probably like 15. And I say, oh, yeah, that's your daughter. Yeah, so make sure she's safe. And I say, OK. Like God. I say, yeah. You got a number? Why she want to call me? She was like 40, gray, and a crackhead. <laughs> that was part of the first day. Then the other thing that happened on my first day as a lifeguard at Gun Club was, um, the kids from the different projects came and climbed over the barbed wire fence and was like banging at the pool. Like, jumped on this one dude, broke a bottle over another dude's head. These twins came up with uh, Uzis, I think, back then. Yeah. And I was like, this is my first day. Wow. Fortunately, they all kind of thought I was a little crazy back then. So they didn't really mess with me too much, you know. It's because I don't really like sunglasses, they hurt my eyes. So I was all squinting in the sun, looking at people all, you know. And it wasn't even like I was trying, but they were like, man, you look crazy. So they ain't, they ain't messing with me too much. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Highway. Anyway, that's just a little Atlanta history for you. Right. Write it down in the books there. Uh, in Denver, when I first came, as I mentioned before, it was the first time I was around a lot of white people since college. And I found that I was, I was meeting a lot of Caucasian women who uh, were really in love with that media image of the black man as a thug. So they was like attracted to me thinking I was going to be like that. You from Atlanta? What's your hustle? Like, you know, so I start saying crazy stuff, but I say it to them real serious because I feel like if somebody comes up to me and asks me what's my hustle, they don't know me. I'm not really a person to them. I'm just the image of what they saw. So I can say all kinds of crazy stuff and they'll just go with it. Matter of fact, you were around for that. You were there for that. It was the waitress at Mama's. What's your hustle? And so I was like, mostly importing and exporting. And she's like, oh, for real? That's how I get down. For sure, for sure. She don't know what I'm saying. So where you do that at? I was like, Mars mostly. She's like, okay, cool, cool. Because I figured she just probably thought it was some black slang that she didn't know, but she was just going to pretend like she, <laughs> so she just went on with it. Right, right, that's how it gets down. Well, I do hair. I braid. I was like, huh, well, good. I was born with the compassion and passion to spit acid and switch graphics till y'all can't see me with thick glasses. Yeah, ain't gonna stop me burning and smoking like trick candles. So quit asking, you know whatever our rips classic. So get past it, nigga, just write down the date and time and tell your children when you encounter the great that I am.